Let's pray. Oh, Lord, help us absorb your word and put it into action. Amen. You may be seated. There's a story about a person of great trust and wisdom in the second chapter of Daniel in the Bible. The person of great trust in the God that we worship is Daniel. And in this story today, he also exhibits great wisdom. Last week, you started getting acquainted with three young Jewish men, Daniel, Shadrach, whoops, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. After being taken into captivity in Babylon, they were given three years of training in the things Babylonian. And after that time, they exhibited great knowledge and understanding. And so the king of Babylon brought them into his government service. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of this far-reaching empire, covering much of the Middle East as we hear it in the news these days, including all the lands of Iran, Iraq, Syria, Israel, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, down to Egypt, and up parts of Turkey. Well, one night this mighty king had a dream. The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, his mind was troubled, and he could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers to tell them, to tell him what he had dreamed. When they stood in, they stood before the king, he said to them, I've had a dream that troubles me, and I want to know what it means. You know, like many people in our day, probably, you know, does my dream have a meaning? He wanted to know what the meaning was. So he called together this group of people, wide-ranging expertise and capabilities, and told them he had a dream that he wanted them to interpret. However, he shrewdly told them they should tell him the dream and then interpret it. Look at the kinds of people he brought together here. Magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, astrologers. Nebuchadnezzar does not tell him his dream. If he had, it would have been easy for people to put some interpretation to it, right? 50 people would have had 50 different interpretations. So again, I think he was shrewd in saying that, but perhaps, perhaps, he didn't remember the dream. I have that trouble. I have a very vivid dream, and I wake up in the morning, and I can't remember what it was. Raise your hand if that ever happens to you. Ooh, over half of you this morning. We're not alone. Well, think about, think about these people that Nebuchadnezzar called together. They're in a tough spot, right? Have you ever been able to tell someone what they dreamed? You know, what would you do? What would you tell the king? Would you say, oh, king, no one could tell another person what they dreamed. Listen to what the Bible says. The astrologers said to the king, O king, live forever. May I butter him up a little bit, right? Tell your servants a dream, and we will interpret it. The king replied to the astrologers, This is what I firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces and your house is turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. They banter back and forth a bit, and then those men called together, tell the king, there is not a man on earth who can dig, do what the king asks. Do you agree? No king, however great and mighty, has ever asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or astrologer. What the king asks is too difficult. No man can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among men. The text says, this made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men in Babylon. So the decree was issued to put the wise men to death, and men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends to put them to death. Notice here that Daniel and his friends were not called together originally. You know, they, are, they weren't uh, enchanters or magicians or sorcerers or astrologers, but they are considered to be wise men. 
And so this execution applies to them. They are young, but they are wise. Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, is sent to find Daniel and his friends to put them to death. This is a tough spot for Daniel, right? Tough spot for Daniel, as it was for those other guys. What would you do? What do you do in a tough spot? What would you do if you were in Daniel's tough spot? The Bible says that Daniel spoke to Arioch with wisdom and tact. He began by asking a question. Why did the king issue such a harsh decree? So Arioch explains what happened and why this edict, the wise men should be killed. At this, and listen, at this Daniel went into the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Daniel urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. We see here that Daniel truly is wise. He knows who to turn to. The men that had said to the king, what? No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among men. But Daniel is wise because he knows the true God. He knows who to turn to. There are gods that people acknowledge in worship, but they're all fictitious gods, right? There's only one true God, the God who reveals himself in the Bible. He's the true God because he's the only God who's alive, the only God who has any capabilities. No other God, no, none of those fictitious gods can do anything. We're going to address that more in another message. But the Bible says, as you heard, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. We have some people in the world today who say that, don't they? There's no God. They're fools. A wise person not only knows that there is a God, a wise person knows who that God is and trusts him. It's the God revealed in the Bible. It's the God who created the heavens and the earth and sustains them with his power. It's the ruler of the heavens and the earth and every continent and every country. He's the one who rules the wind and the waves, the trees and the fields, and every living creature. That's the God who's alive. The true God had told his chosen people, the Israelites, as he brought them out of slavery in Egypt, Exodus 20, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, or I am a zealous God. Unfortunately, God's people throughout the Old Testament era had largely forgotten that command and forgotten God. But Daniel and his friends are among that small percentage of Jews who are still worshiping the true God. They still remember that God. They still honor that God. He's the creator and the sustainer. He's the God who saves. As the book of Proverbs tells us, the fear of the Lord or the reverence of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trusting in the only true God is wise. A fool says in his heart, there is no God. At this point in the story, Daniel now calls out to God in prayer. He wisely calls out to God in prayer about this problem situation he's facing. He also gets his friends praying. And God answers, listen, during the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. So recognizing God for who he is, isn't it wise to talk to God in prayer? Isn't it wise to trust him for the perfect answer? You know, the almighty God who reveals himself in the Bible is the God we can rely on. He truly is God, and it truly is wise for us to rely on him. We know that he 
hears prayer. We know that he answers prayer. Now, he may not answer prayers the way we want or the way we envision, but God's answer is always the perfect answer because he is holy. He is holy. Everything he does is perfect. And we can trust God's answers to always be the perfect answers. Isn't it wise then for us to talk to God in prayer and to expect his perfect answers? I'm guessing that many of you have expanded your prayer life over the years. I encourage you in that and I urge you also to help your sons and daughters or grandchildren to also become prayers, people who pray, who trust God and his perfect answers. And I imagine there's some of you who have gradually diminished your prayer life over the years, perhaps halfway giving up on God. But let me urge you to be renewed in your fervor for prayer, trusting that God's answers are perfect answers. God answers the prayers of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. God told Daniel Nebuchadnezzar's dream and the interpretation. So Daniel immediately praises God, praise God. These words of praise are recorded in the second book of Daniel. Kind of think through these words with me as I read them. Praise be to the, na the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells within him. I thank and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we ask of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. Notice that Daniel here in this prayer is focused on God. He's not focused on himself, what a great man he is, that God has favored him. He's focused on God. Daniel acknowledges that God is God forever and ever. No, he more than acknowledges him. He praises him. He lauds him. He extols him for his wisdom and his power. He's the God who changes seasons. He's the God who sets up and deposes kings, not only 2,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago, but today. And yes, he is the God of light who brings out the things that are hidden in darkness. That's our God. Notice again that Daniel is focused on God not focused on himself, not focused on himself. The Bible says, then Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had appointed to execute the wise men of Babylon, and said to him, do not execute the wise men of Babylon. Take me to the king, and I will interpret his dream for him. Arioch took Daniel to the king at once and said, I have found a man among the exiles from Judah who can tell the king what his dream means. The king asked Daniel, are you able to tell me what I saw in my dream and interpret it? And Daniel replied, taking no credit for himself, but again, praising God in front of the king. No wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain to the king the mystery he has asked about. But there's a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in days to come. Your dream and the visions that pass through your mind as you lay in your bed are these. Notice again that Daniel praises God in front of the king. But I will say here, by the way, we're not going to explore that dream today, but perhaps take that time to read the rest of Daniel chapter 2 and hear not only the dream but the explanation. I will say here, though, that we see here that God not only knows the future, but he makes the future happen. There's a prophecy of the Messiah at the end of this interpretation. The Messiah is coming, Daniel says. He's coming after a sequence of four specific world powers. Notice again that God, excuse me, Daniel wisely praises God as he stands before the king. Let me summarize what we've seen in Daniel here. There's a one, two, and three here. Daniel is wise in a way that we can pursue. A wise person not only knows there's a God, 
A wise person knows who that God is. It's the God who reveals himself in the Bible. It's the God who created the heavens and the earth and sustains everything by his power. Daniel relied on that God, our God. It is wise for us to rely on him, firmly trusting him as God. Second, in trouble, Daniel immediately and wisely calls out to God with prayer about this problem situation. Calls out to God in prayer. And he gets his friends praying. Whatever our situation, can't we pray? Doesn't have to be a crisis for us to pray. We can pray to God about the everyday things of life. But pray, pray to the true God. That is wise. And third, remember who God is and who we are. He's a sovereign God, and we are his creations. As the psalmist says in Psalm 8, who are we that you should pay attention to us? Who are we? You know, we're not the center of the universe. God is. God is. He deserves all honor and glory. It's wise for us to faithfully praise the true God, Lord of the heavens and earth and everything in them. There's only one true God. Notice for Daniel this sequence of wisely trusting God, praying to God, and praising God is not once in a lifetime, something he did because it's a desperate time. This, is the, this God is the focus of Daniel's life, the passion of Daniel's life. This is not just a God for, as a crutch in a desperate time. Daniel is a man of faith and action, made wise, made wise by God. His trust led him to praying and praising. And our trust, likewise, leads us to praying and praising. In that era of Old Testament history, there were certainly other people who trusted the true God. Very small number, it seems, though. They put their trust into action, people like the prophet Jeremiah, prophet Ezekiel. However, most people in Judah, most people, had drifted away from God and were actively worshiping other gods or mixing their rituals of multiple gods. They ignored God's warning through the prophets. And that led to God's severe discipline, severe discipline, letting his people being overtaken by the Babylonians, which left huge percentages of the Jews dead and others taken into captivity. The eternal God, God of mercy and grace, has called us to be his people. It's for our good, not his, that he tells us, commands us, as Jesus reiterated in our gospel reading. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. That's God's command to us as well. Love the Lord your God. We're called to be God's people forever, and we are blessed to be God's children and to have that eternal promise of life with God forever. We are the people of God, graciously saved by God through the sacrificial death of Jesus and the work of the Holy Spirit. May we always wisely and passionately acknowledge the true God as God, hanging on to him with fervent faith, trusting him, praying to him, and praising him with our words and with our lives. I pray that God's astounding love will draw all of us to that life of being wise, being wise, wisely trusting, praying to, and praising the only true God. May we do that every minute of every day. God has wonderfully chosen us to be his people. We are totally blessed. Amen. And all God's people say, Amen. Let's pray. Lord, as we think about your word for us today, help us apply this wisdom of Daniel, trusting you, relying on you, praying to you, whatever our situation, whatever our needs, what, but helpfully also help us to praise you, to praise you because you are God. We live under your love and your blessings. 
we are blessed totally. So again, help us to trust, to pray, and to praise. Amen. Amen.